So the next part of what we do is um, brainstorming features. And many of you had said that you're familiar with user stories and writing those. And that's the approach that we're going to take about doing this as well. Um, so what we're going to, I'm going to, we've got a bunch of cards up here. And when, we're going to take a little break after this part here, but you guys can go to the bathroom. We're going to put these cards onto your tables and you're going to work as groups, defining, brainstorming some features. <clears throat> and the real important thing to think of is, are the, these roles, because features are going to fall in a big way out of these roles. And so knowing those roles is super helpful. But also knowing those roles is, is very good, because um, you know, as, as a speaker, I might want to be able to log in to see the event. Um, but as an attendee, I might want to be able to log in to see the event. Sounds very much the same, right? But as a speaker, I want to log in to see the event so that I can put my slide deck up there. But as an attendee, I want to slide, I want to go in to see the event so that I can see who the speaker is. It's big differences. Uh, so on the card, <clears throat> there's a, the top left corner here is as a, and that's where you'll put your role. So for instance, if you pick on sponsors, you'll say as a sponsor, uh, I want some feature so that, and then the reason. Uh, we have examples for every, every group as well. <clears throat> So this one is just one that we kind of canned out there. As a host, I want to know who is coming to the meeting so that I know who is in the building for security reasons. If you've ever been to the Assurity building, they're pretty hard on that. You have to print them out a list and everybody has to sign that who's coming uh, so that they kind of have you know, an idea of who has been in their building. Uh, so if you do anything crazy, they know who to look for, right? <clears throat> But another really, really important part is on the back here, we have conditions of acceptance or acceptance criteria. Um, does that make sense to everybody when I say conditions of acceptance? So the real important thing is, how do I know this story is done? And how many, of you, here's a good one, how many of you have been given a feature and they're like, I need you to work on this feature? And you build it, and exactly what they said, you give them that, and they go, that's awesome, but you're not done because really it needs this too. And then you do that. And you bring it back, that's great. But really also needs this, you didn't get that. That should have fallen out of there. So the cycles can go and go and go. And the important thing is, well the, the good thing to see there is that what's happening, the scope is just getting pushed and pushed and increasing and then you're actually kind of giving them free work. And that's not, that's not so great, you don't want to, you don't want to miss out on that. So the, the acceptance criteria is your contract to say, when we've fulfilled this list of items, these things that we have set out, uh, we know we've completed this story. Um, if you decide that more conditions of acceptance go on there, then we probably need to create a new user story for that. Or we need to talk about the scope of the project and what do we shift out to manage that. Has so anybody ever worked on a project that had scope creep? <laughs> Has anybody ever worked on a project that doesn't have scope? <laughs> So, I mean, and you're managing it really, really well. <laughs> I, want, I want to just kind of emphasize something that Adam said, so, and, and that's because it's really easy to say, you know, when you look at your defined scope in your project, to say if somebody adds a new module into your project, that's scope creep, right? It's, whoa, wait a minute, that module wasn't defined before, that's a huge piece of work that's going to that's gonna affect my, my schedule or my budget. No problem. But what Adam talked about is at the feature level, the subtle pieces that get added on. And, and they can add up to as, as much or more than a whole new module in your system because of the little pieces that happen. So the, the way we're defining user stories, not how many of you get, I can't remember, how many of you have used user stories in the past? Have you defined what's done for those user stories, whether you call it conditions of acceptance or whatever? Yeah, what, what does done mean to you? Does anybody have? What does done mean? Working software that has acceptance criteria. Uh, see, that's pretty specific. All right. What are people saying? They can't hear. Working software that passes the acceptance criteria. That's pretty specific. Now, we worked at Department Rose in, in an agile program project for years without really understanding what done was. So this acceptance criteria at the feature level is really important because that's how you know when your feature is done. You can put it away, it's finished, and if somebody wants to change that feature, it's a new user story. 
as opposed to just building on that user story. That's how you manage scope, because that new user story now can't go into your product backlog, can't go into your schedule anywhere without affecting the rest of the schedule, right? It's a really obvious new chunk of work. So acceptance criteria are a really critical part, understanding what's done. Yeah. Yep. So kind of in the same breath of how do you know when the user story is done, how do you know when the user story is either an appropriate level of depth, meaning it's not too specific, but it's not so generic that it, mm -hmm. how, how do you kind of gauge how deep to set the file on that? Yeah, that's a really good point. His question was, you know, how do you know, how do you not get too specific? And that's a good point because the user story is really, it's like a contract to talk about that feature later. It's not a specification. It's not like on the conditions of acceptance, we should say, um, well, the report should have, you know, sans serif font and it should be, have these column names and, it, you know, it, we don't, that's too deep. So, but it does need to be specific enough. So if they say, oh, well, you know, when, when people signed up, I actually wanted an email. Well, you know, that's great. That's a great idea, but we didn't talk about that in the conditions of acceptance. So we'll add a new user story for you and we'll send out an email, but that wasn't part of the original story. So you kind of have to think of like a lawyer, in, in my opinion. You have to go, okay, so if this joker does this story, he could, he could print this list out and tape it to the wall, and according to the story, it's done. So I'm going to say, well, it's got to be, I've got to be able to search on the website. And I actually want to be able to filter by first name. You know, so a couple of things like that, like, I, you know, I expect, I, I can search it, I can print it, I, I can export it to CSV. You kind of want to, you know, say a couple of things you expect it to do so that, Someone can just say, well, you can get to it, but it's you know 20 clicks down here, and you have to type in the URL, and then you can find it. It's there. You know? So you kind of have to you have to balance that. Another part of that is, uh, and I'll pose this as a question to you. So, do we have to define all the features, all these stories right now during this meeting? Is that the intention for the project? For the project? No, it won't happen. No. I mean, it's impossible to do that. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, because user stories will come up as you work the project. It always happens. New features, new ideas, uh, changing regulations. Who knows? Changing business processes. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to get back to his, to his question. Sure. Here. Yeah. What's your name? I'm sorry. Scott. Scott. Scott asked a pretty good question, and that was, how do we know when a story is at the right level of detail? It's not too general. It's not too specific. In this process, we tend to err on the too general side. Because if we get too specific, we'll be, we'll be here all day. And we've had this happen where we get, you know, if you think of a, a system that has five modules, we get three of them defined really well, and then we forget to define two of them. And we don't want that to happen in this meeting. We want to stay at a little bit more generic level. Um, the other thing is, for us personally, the way we manage user stories at the Department of Roads and the way we did it at Five Nines is, when you've got a user story that you're ready to start working on, um, you say to yourself, all right, so how, how do I do this, right? We, we call it tasking. I don't know what you guys call it. Um, and what we do is we go in and we break down a user story. If I'm going to get this user story done, I've got to do this, 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 you know, five to ten things, whatever it is. If we can't do that, that's a really good sign that that user story is too broad. So if, if you look at a user story and it's, uh, as, a, as a project sponsor, I want to make money on my website so that I can be rich. Well, that's, that's a, <laughs> you can't break that down. There's no steps to doing that. You've got to break it down into smaller user stories. Does that answer the question that you asked? Yeah, it, might be, it might become more evident as we work through some examples, I think, and yeah. that user story relates to functional yeah. requirements. When, when you go point a user story, a lot of times we talk through tasking as well. And so when we go to estimate what that user story is going to be, we'll start talking through, well, what does it take to get it done? And that, again, we may say, well, I can't, I can't estimate this thing. I'm throwing up the infinity card. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of one of the things that we're doing. I just thought I'd throw that out there to kind of maybe help help with that. Uh, but in this process, you definitely want to err on the more generic side. If you get too detailed in this process, you'll wind up with only part of the system defined really well, and then the rest of it, you know, there'll be no nothing about reports. There'll be nothing about login. There'll be nothing about um, you know security. So that's my spiel on that. I would also say that you may find that it's dependent on how your company works. Uh, yeah, when when we were at Five Nines, 
um, well, we're, even at the Department of Rights, we, we point our stories. Are you all familiar with pointing your stories? And, and nope. So, pointing's a little weird. Pointing's like, the, I don't know, it's, it's kind of relative. It's a way to relative, yeah, yeah. estimate things relative to something that you understand. Like don't, or a lot of like it, time and effort to complete. Complexity. Sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Complexity is probably even better on that one. So, like, the bigness of the story, and you, you, you rate that oftentimes on a, on a scale of numbers. And for us at five nines, we found that it, when we got to pointing, and uh, our point levels got to an eight or a twelve, uh, which the numbers really they follow like the Fibonacci sequence most time. Um, when we got to an eight or twelve, we were getting pretty heavy for us in our area, and we knew at that point that that story was probably too big. You probably could break that story up into smaller stories. Now, at the Department of Roads, it's more like 13, oh, 13, is 13 a number? Yeah, Not 13. 12. So yeah. 13 and 20. <clears throat> so when it got above 13, that's where we start to think, wow, this is a really big story. Do we break it down? So, you know, Department of Roads is a much bigger company, more dev, so our, our number went up higher there. Five nines was, was pretty much the three of us. So our number was smaller to break down the user story to the Chewable? Mm -hmm. Did you will? You know, like we could we could digest this. We could get through those parts. Yeah. And I just wanted to elaborate again on, you know, where where do we target user stories and features in this meeting? Well, we're we're talking about a website. We need to be a little bit more specific than that. Uh, we could talk about you know what kind of pages it has and what kind of features it has. That's that's actually a pretty good level to be at. Uh, we can talk a little bit about page layout, like, you know, I, we don't really want to get too much into, well, the menu should be on the left side, but we might, you know, dip into that a little bit. You know, content, you know, I don't know how, if there would be anything we'd want to get down into, into content and color. If we're starting to say, you know, I want a theme that looks like this, or I think we're probably getting too deep. We kind of want to stick at, you know, the feature level, um, what it should do not so much how it should act or what it should look like. Unless that's a really critical. Unless it's really <laughs> critical. Success yeah. yeah, you know, rule of thumb kind of. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think let's do, um, well, I'll tell you, you know what I think we ought to do is I think we ought to do a break and then we ought to come back and do your stories. Does that sound all right? Sounds good. We'll, we'll lead you guys through a, an example and then uh, if you have any questions, we'll answer those and then we'll break out in groups. Yeah, we'll start maybe on the groups around so yeah, take 10 minutes. <laughs> so let's pick on the host. We'll just pick one, one story for the host. What's a feature that the host may they want? They go to our site, what's what's the speaker gonna wanna I mean a host, sorry. What's a host gonna wanna see, wanna be able to get to from our site? Assuming again that we're not using their infrastructure, yeah. but I pick, you know, I pick the one that you and I are gonna just. All right. <laughs> so, you know, as a, as a host, somebody, you know, the facility, what might they want to know? We, we kind of threw out a little bit of one earlier, talking about what a surety needs, but number of registered uh, participants. Yeah. Okay, number of registered participants. <clears throat> okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> we want to know who is coming to the meeting. So, all right. Yes. <laughs> how, how about a list of upcoming meetings at their facility? Okay. That's good. Yeah. So I'm just going to write the line here. There's a host. <laughs> Sorry. I want. Hey, not you too. <laughs> Only one of us can cough at a time. <laughs> So as a host, I want a list of upcoming events that might be at my hey, it's okay. <laughs> that, that might be at my uh, at my facility. Uh, list. Uh, I can see it on the uh, the evaluation sheet. The speaker berated me for coffee. <laughs> Spelled A D A S. <laughs> 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 uh, right, at my facility. Now, here's the really great part. Why? Why do they want that? So that I can schedule accessible meeting rooms. 
so I don't so double I schedule things. Accessible meeting rooms, so right. don't double schedule. Security reasons. Security reasons. Number of snacks provided. <laughs> Number of snacks provided. The great thing about this is you can see this is pretty much what we would say is, is one feature, but it's got a lot of different so that's. And in my mind, there's a lot of different stories that are falling out of that. Um, and I think that's great. This is a, Let's pick one. This is a good example. So, oh, snacks. I, I snacks. <laughs> the guy who brought all the water in the granola bars. All right, so uh, as a host, I want a list of upcoming events at my facility. If we could maybe generalize it so that I can plan, have whatever resources available I need to. Or what were yeah, some of the other ones that people threw out? Size of the meeting room. Size of the meeting room. Security. So need resources and security. It sounds Probably like just better. schedule resources accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of generalize it that way. Yeah. For instance, this room, that we were only allowed to have 30 of you attend because fire marshal said so. Yeah. So that's kind of good. I would never think of that until they were like, well, you can only have 30 people. Well, what? Ooh, there's a different user story. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So that I do not make the fire marshal mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So now we have the front part of the card done. Now again, um, we'll flip the cards over, and on the back side we have the conditions of story acceptance <coughs> or the acceptance criteria, whatever you call knowing how the story is done. Um, so how, how would we know that this story is done? See a list of the event topics. See a list of the topics, or maybe just maybe or just the events, because the host might not care about the topics. Yeah. You might as well, as long as you're making a list, roll in the current number of attendees. Yep. I need to know how many people so that the fire marshal doesn't, you know, get mad at me. Um, <clears throat> list of events. Who the event coordinator is? All right, so main, mainly like as a host, who I talk to if I have a problem with this. Right. Yep. too far down the weeds. Those are some of the things to think about, right? Yeah. Web page. I don't do well with angles. So, so yeah, so this is pretty much, and this is a good example. So again, we have, we've identified our role, and we've kind of identified our feature here, and our reason for that feature, and what it means to be done with this story. Um, again, We've made this kind of <laughs> generic. These reasons could get really big. So we want to be, um, <clears throat> we want to try to be pretty specific with this, but you know, we could get down in the weeds. Af again, after we're done with this process, these, these meetings, we generally go and brainstorm more. Uh, that's why we say you don't want to go too far down. You kind of want to identify these epics, these huge things, mm -hmm. so that later when we break apart and you know, you guys as a team would take take what you collect after this meeting and we go and digest it further and then you could go down further the, into those tree, those uh, you know, the different areas of the stories to figure and you know, fine point, figure out exactly what you need to get. Any, any questions on this format? The conditions of acceptance are something that, or the acceptance criteria, are something that we are using more recently and by that I mean like the last year or to 18 months maybe. More, more religiously. And the, the problem that I found with them is that there's just a wide variety of, of details um, that get added in. Some people are like, you know, they basically will write something you guys should be careful of as we move forward is writing a, uh, an acceptance criteria that says, I'll know it's done when it's done. Which is, you know, like saying, I want a user story so that I can have the user story. You know, 
it's that same kind of deal. That's something to be careful of. And when we did this session um, a couple of weeks ago for, for a number of people from Parker Roads, we had so many of those. I'll know it's done when it's done. You know? And there's a working interface that I can get my information. This is what they would say. So they say, like, oh, I know this is done when there's a working interface where I can see a list of projects. But they wouldn't have thought about, um, well, can I print it? Or can I export it? Or can I get it emailed? You know, it isn't taken one step farther. Yeah, in fact, you know, to kind of extend that one out, one of the things was they wanted to see a list of projects. And they said, I'll know it's done when I can see a list of projects. And so I took the card and I said, so OK, if we just um, get a whiteboard and we mount it by the elevator and I write all the projects down on that whiteboard, is that good enough? That's kind of an example. And they were like, well, no, it's got to be on the web. Well, you know, they didn't say I, don't, I have a website where I can load and see the list. You know, it, it sounds ridiculous, but the interpretation there can get crazy, particularly when you hand these off to a developer and they, yeah. they can start working on them. I mean, and I know they're supposed to work with the customer. They don't just take these as a specification. But uh, it's important to kind of give everybody an idea, especially when we go to estimate a point, um, to give people an idea of what this thing is. And if you guys have any good ideas, we'd love to hear them. Yeah. Yes. We'd like to get better at it. Yep. Uh, in fact, we'll talk about it later, I'm sure. But kind of, we've got a lot of this information up on GitHub. And we wanted to do it on GitHub because we want to see how it adapts and how you guys might take it and, and adapt it and, and see it grow. Um, I think that will be a lot of fun. So, so kind of kind of the round trip on this. Once you guys have gone through your brainstorming sessions and done your user stories, and you know gone back and kind of looked at your criteria, do you have a waiting period on those, or do you send them out to people to review? You know, wh where do they go? kind of in the meantime until someone <laughs> blesses them as this is the gospel. Yeah, well, <clears throat> we'll get further into that, I'm certain, when we get down the way. But at the end of the agenda, guys, we'll okay. talk about what we do not, following up this. Not question. to say, I'm not going to answer your question right now. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so you know, there is a waiting period. Generally, when we're done with our, we're done with this period, we'll do some more research and more work after this meeting, which we'll talk about roughly about how much we used to do and how much we've done. And then once we're done with that, we, we release it to them. And that's kind of the interesting part, but we'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay. Uh, another, sorry, real quick. another part of the card is on the bottom, there's these ranks. And we put cards on the tables. These ranks um, aren't necessarily for the brainstorming part right now. We'll use that later. So please leave that blank. Uh, that's why I wrote no touchy. So, who cool, you want to? Sorry. They're looking for the cards. I was just going to say. We put them on like every other table. We'll have, we'll kind of have you guys break up into groups now and start writing user stories. And the three of us will kind of float around and help. But um, I'm thinking of you know these two tables, those two tables, that table, those two tables, and this table. So that's one, two, three, four, five groups. Yep. Yep. And then uh, one more, one more thing before you guys break up, real quick. So in order to avoid a bunch of duplicated stories, we're going to actually have assign you um, a specific role to think about. That way, you don't all create a bunch of stories for attendees. So we'll just go over in order, um, you guys, sponsors. Okay. Next group, you are attendees. So back in the, are you? You're going to join up with them. Okay. So how about that group? You do attendees and speakers. Is that okay? And that back group do admin. <coughs> and then are those two tables, are you two coming think, together? Uh, these two. These two? OK. Yeah. Those two, um, I've kind of lost track here. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're host. Host? host. Oh, I perspective, missed perspective member. I, I missed, yeah, I'm sorry, I missed that too. So we got one, two, three. OK, so we kind of consolidated. Now we only have four groups. So why don't we combine these two? Because we kind of already started breaking up hosts. There's yeah. not too many. Either right OK. So one more time, sponsors, <laughs> both attendees and speakers, admin back in the back, and then prospective member and host for you guys. What we're going to do in just a minute is we're going to take turns. Each group is going to uh, tell us one story. And we'll, we'll come grab that story from you and put it up on the board. And we're going to go around and around. And you might not get through all of your stories today. So we'd like you to take about five minutes 
to stack your cards <laughs> in the most valuable, the least valuable. Yeah, so it's, it's a question of um, what has to be done for this project to be this is worthwhile, to be worth doing. It might not be the sexiest story, but you know, if it's, if it's part of the uh, foundation, you need it in there. So go ahead and start stacking your cards. Um, you don't have to write the rank on them now. Yeah, they're all right. Are you guys prioritizing at this point? We can. Yep. Yeah. So that's what we want to do. Even though it's good. The most important to you guys that to do. Uh, I don't want to say least important. But most important? Okay. So now, another thing that I might say about the priorities is. It's a lot of times really easy, especially when you're given a specific role, it's really easy for you to say, I'm going to serve me. I'm going to serve myself. But you have to say, what, you know, is there stuff below that needs to happen first before before something else gets together? Yeah. Well, you might take a story saying, this is really important, but you actually can't get to that story until something else gets there. But you may not run into that since you're a specific role. But if you do have certain things that are like, hey, you know, I want to be able to get this user data as a sponsor, well, you might need more information.